All right, boys and girls, on today's episode of Cooking with Kitty, uh, we're going to take it that, back down south and do an old school fish fry. And what I mean by that is Southerners love to fry fish. We learn to fry fish before we learn how to ride a bike and just after we learn how to walk. So it's a big thing, something we love to do. Uh, for my fish fries, uh, I, I prefer catfish, red bellies, or big titty brim. It's just what I, it's just my favorite. Uh, and you, a titty brim is one of them big brim that are so big you have to hold them on your titty to pull the hook out. You know, you can't hold them like that and pull the hook out. Big brim. Uh, but today we got halibut and, uh, you know, let me, uh, preface that. with saying rich and rare Canadian whiskey. It'll always put a smile on your face. <laughs> I just had to get that in. Um, I don't know if I just said, but what, what goes with the fish fry is uh, your fish, obviously, cheese grits, which is a staple of the South. If you don't like cheese grits, you're not from the South. And hush puppies. Cubbies did not have hush puppy mix. I went up there yesterday. Uh, they didn't even know what hush puppies were. So this may be a treat for a lot of you. So we're making them from scratch. Um, I'll get to the ingredients later. Uh, my grease is warming. I'm going to feature my items like I do every week. And last week, if you remember, I told you I was going to feature incense. And this is my Songs of India, my go-to incense. It reminds me of my daughter. I told you that. And my daughter is such a strong confident and independent young woman and there's a flip side to that when, when you know when you raise your kids you raise them to get out of the house as soon as possible to be independent on their by their self you know be a contributing member to society that's what every parent expects their children to do but the flip side is you know, then when they do that and they go off on their own, you feel empty because they don't need you. You raise them not to need you, and then when they don't need you anymore, it is tough. It is extremely hard to get over that. I mean, it, she turned out to be everything that I could have ever imagined her being. I'm so proud of her. And then, you know, the shoe's on the other foot. You raised her right, and then she doesn't need you. And, you know, it's, you spend the rest of your life now wanting them to need you. You know, you want them to call you. You want them to need you. And, you know, it's it's a double-edged sword there. So, But anyway, uh, and I had told you, I'll feature some other incense here. Here's another one of my favorites. It's uh, sandalwood. And it's got a very uh, subtle, kind of woodsy, subtle smell to it. I, I, I really like it. Sandalwood. It's a good one. And then my other favorite, which I'm actually burning right now. And I'm burning it right now because forest. Uh, it is very good. It's a stronger, more sprucey, real pine tree uh, scent and it's very good at hiding the smell of cat shit kitty just shit in here and it stinks I told you last time small spaces you know when cat shit she usually shits around two or three o'clock in the morning and I don't know why she does that but when she shits I immediately am awake from whatever dream I'm having I go oh cat shit I gotta get that shit. I gotta get it out of here so I keep this by my bed. It'll give me an extra hour to sleep sometimes. Um, so there's that. Okay, so let's, uh, grease is warming, water's warming. These are my hush puppies and I've got uh, flour, cornmeal, sugar, salt. I put a little garlic powder in here. You can kind of do whatever you want to in there. Um, then we'll bust an egg. You know, we'll bust an egg in here. I'm going to actually throw 
some jalapenos. Uh, you can do bell peppers, uh, whatever you want in here. And, and, and hush puppies, it's all about the consistency. You want a good consistency. And I haven't made them from scratch in a long time, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, it's so much easier when you have hush puppy mix and then you just add water to get your consistency. But we're in Alaska here, so, you know, we do what we have to do. And I don't know if I told you, we're going to be cooking halibut today, okay? Okay, that's getting to be a, that's a pretty good consistency there. I'd like them a little bit thicker, to be honest with you. Um... So you just add you just add a little cornmeal or flour, whatever, till you get the right consistency. And the more you cook them, oh yeah. Okay, if you can see that, that's gonna spoon out pretty good. Honestly, they're probably still a little. Okay, you guys, I'm trying to hurry. You know, to try to. And if you ever decide to make a cooking show, you're gonna you're gonna find out it's hard to get everything in. I told you nobody wants to watch a 15 minute video. It's very hard to get things do do in you know in 15 minutes. But when I fry fish, I like to use rich rare Canadian whiskey. It goes with everything. And okay, so here's our halibut. And I'm going to be honest with you, I honestly don't know how these this halibut is. I feel like it was freezer burnt real bad from the package. The ermine had got in it uh, several months ago. The ermine had got in a bunch of the fish because, I, you know, I was keeping it outside. And he, you know, ate into a bunch of the fish. I think he may have pissed in the bags or something because, honestly, when I thawed this out, oh, fuck. Tony Chatteries, you need to season everything first. I like Tony Chatteries. Uh, and I, like I said, I'm very fucking, I'm very liberal with the season. But Tony Chatteries, to me, has an excellent flavor. It really, really sets the dish off. And, you know, I used to, fly, I used to fry fish with cornmeal and flour, make my own mixture. This, if you can ever get your hands on this, uh, this is all-purpose Everglades season. I have my mom ship me bags of this. I fry everything. Beaver, lynx, fish, anything you need a breading for. And you probably only get it in Florida. Everglades seasoning. I get her to send me five-pound bags at a time. Um, but let's, let's see how the... Uh... Okay. I'm going to turn my grits up a little bit. And when I'm frying, you know, cooking, grits is, grits is a, a staple of the South. Everybody's got their own way to do them. I don't measure anything. I've never measured anything. My granddaddy never measured anything. So I've got what I think is enough water in there. And then I just start dumping grits until I feel like I've got enough grits in there. You, you cooking, you're cooking by feel. It's 100% cooking by feel. Uh, that worked out well. See, so that's good. And a lot of salt, okay. Grits are boiling now. A lot of salt. I like a lot of garlic in mine. I like a lot of garlic grits. Uh, I like a little pepper. And we're also going to add some jalapenos just because I got them. They're there. But now, okay, so my grits are boiling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir them one time. That's important. You only stir grits one time. Okay. They're boiling. Put a lid on it. Boom, low heat. I will not touch these grits again. It's a science. I will add my cheese and my butter 
is going to be the final step for the grits. Uh, I'm clipping along. I'm at 10 minutes. This is how I check my uh, my grease to see if it's hot. It may seem like a gross thing. It's just something I've always done. I spit in it. It's it's going to bubble up. So you know your grease is ready when it starts when it starts bubbling good. Um, let's get a few more of these fillets. But I don't know if I finished telling you about this halibut. So. The ermine got in there. He was eating my beaver outside. He ate a bunch of my, my meat and tore up all my fish packages. But so when I defrosted this halibut and I cut it, it's mushy. Like it's like it's rotten. It's got a very off flavor scent to it. Uh, you know, it's negative 20 degrees outside. It has been forever. It, you sh it shouldn't be mushy like when i couldn't even cut it with a knife it was mushy it, it almost feels like rotten meat it's definitely got a tainted smell to it so we're just gonna fry the shit out of it but like i mean you, you don't like you don't waste shit out here you know that's one of the worst things you can do is waste things because you don't have it but we're just gonna cook it and then see you know see what happens i don't know Yeah, okay, so that'll be ready in a minute here. Grits looking good, gotta turn them up a little. I'll be honest with you, it's gonna be real hard to get this timing right, you know, in 15 minutes. Uh, so, uh, you probably noticed this already. Rich and rare Canadian whiskey, get you some. Good stuff. Uh, I've got a new hat today. I got this at Willow Rose. I've told you about it. Go see my friends up there, uh, Charlene, Julie, and Kim. They'll hook you up with the best beanies you've ever had. If you, this is an old, this beanie was knitted by someone's grandmother. It's a wool beanie, very well constructed. Actually, Julie gave me this beanie, but you can get these at the Willow Rose. But this was, this is like something you're your guagua or your granny would would have knitted you with so much love and whatever. And that that's why I love going up there and I love wearing I love wearing that stuff. Uh okay, so do 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 We might not do this as I normally would do and because we're cut on time here. But with uh when you're frying hush puppies you always want to Get your grease hot, fry your fish first, and then you use your hush puppy batter to clean up the grease. At least that's what my granddaddy always told me, so you always do the hush puppies last. And the story behind hush puppies, a lot of people probably don't know, is, and I'm going off memory, like I told you guys, I've had COVID, I probably lost 43% of my memory. But the story is behind hush puppies is that for some reason, I'm thinking German people. But in Germany, when the cooks were... When the cooks were doing shit, they would have a bunch of stray dogs come outside and they'd start barking, saying, I want food. And they're like... They started making these batter dishes and chunking them to them, say, hush puppies, hush puppies. That's where hush puppies came about. A little known fact. Check it out. All right. I'll be honest with you, my grease is not hot enough yet that I feel comfortable frying the fish in. So, I'm going to go ahead and do the hush puppies first. Here's another trick for the hush puppies. Wet your spoon in water. Wet your spoon in water. Dip your hush puppies out. It should have slid right off there. something ain't. I tell you to be honest with you what it is my my mixture like I said it's a homemade mixture it's not the consistency that I would like and I'll be honest with you with cooking consistency is everything but you see I mean that slides off good 
Um, consistency is everything. Fresh grease is a big plus, and this is another thing. This grease, God knows how old this grease is. I mean, this grease, you know, because it's hard to throw shit out up here and everything. But so, this grease is whatever. Fuck, I'm at 15 minutes. <sighs> Nobody wants to watch these kind of videos. Uh, I don't think guys want to watch 15 minute videos. So I'm going to kind of cut to the chase here real quick. Yeah, I, I need to plan this shit out better next time. But I, I, any of you guys that think it's, it's easy to do a cooking video in 15 minutes, I mean, you can't, you, you just can't. I ain't even added the cheese in my fucking grits yet. All right, I'm going to stir the grits one time. Oh, these are getting good. I'm going to stir the grits one time. I'm a huge fan of cheese grits. I put a lot of cheese in there. Oh boy. Boys, these, these things are gonna be good. And then I put me a big old stick of butter in there. Boom. Just let me show you. It's we're at 16 minutes. I'm fixing to cash out on this video. But if you see that. Man, I, I hate that I didn't get to finish showing you guys this because this is, you know, this is one of my favorite things to do is fry fish. It's just, I feel like I'm I'm strapped for time and what have you. Uh, you know, maybe if I get a sponsor, R&R, &R, Canadian whiskey, I can have a longer show. Anyway, until next week, we'll see you guys.